Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn that how we can use chi-square test for independence in social science research. And we will also learn that how we can perform chi-square test for independence in SPSS software. So let's start. What is chi-square? But before moving to the chi-square, if you are new to our channel, please do not forget to subscribe the channel. Let's start. Chi-square test for independence is normally used when you have two categorical variables and each of these variables can have two or more categories. This test is based on cross tabulation which classified according to the categories in each variable. And if you have two by two table, like you have two categories in each variable, if your one variable is gender and it has two categories, male and female, and you have second variable as smoking status and you have two categories like you are smoker or not smoker. The output from chi-square includes an additional correction value like Yates correction for continuity. This is designed to compensate for what some writers feel is an overestimate of the chi-square value when used with a two by two table. So what kind of Research question we can answer with the help of chi-square test for independence. If you have a question like this one, is there an association between gender and smoking behavior? Are males are more likely to be smokers than females? Is the proportion of males that smoke the same as the proportion of females? Or if you have a question like this one, is there a relationship between sport for increasing foreign aid to developing countries and voting intention? So is there any association between foreign aid and voting at an intention? Next, are smokers are more or less likely than non-smoker to fall ill at least once during winter? What do you need if you want to perform chi-square test of independence in SPSS? Are you using this test in your research? You need two categorical variables with two or more categories in each. Like if you have gender, male, female, and smoking status, if you are a smoker or a not smoker. Here you have two categories like yes and no. What are the assumptions if I want to use chi-square test for independence for my research or I am using this test in SPSS software? So one of the assumptions is this test actually falls in non if you have a non parametric, if this is a non parametric test, and uh, here there is no normality assumption that we have to follow. The next assumption is the lowest expected frequency in, in any cell should be five or more. Some authors suggest less stringent criteria, at least 80% of the cells should have expected frequency of five or more. We will see when we will find out the SPSS output. If you have a two by two table, it is recommended that the expected frequency be at least 10. If you have two by two table that violate this assumption, you should consider reporting Fisher exact probability test instead, instead of uh, a Pearson correlation value. This is generated automatically by IBM SPS and we will see that how we can report Fisher exact probability test. What is the procedure to perform chi-square test for independence in SPSS? First of all, you have to go to analyze, then click on the descriptive statistic option. Then you will find out cross tab option. And after finding out the cross tab option, you just have to simply put the variables in rows and columns. If you want to see one of the variable in rows, like I'm going to keep gender in rows, male and female, and the Column option is for smoking or non-smoking status. You can choose as per on your convenience. If you want to key the smoker and rows and gender and column, you can also keep this option. There is no strict rule for this, but you have to see that how you can explain your two variables, whether they have association or not. In the next step, you have to click some of the options like you have to click on statistics option and here you have to click chi-square option, check this option. And in next step, 
you have to click on cells button and you have to check the observed rows and adjusted standardized option in the next step you can also uh, if you want to find out the effect size you can check on the phi and kramer's v option so let's start with the spss data file and next we will see that how we can explain the output of this chi square test first of all i am going to this data file this is chi square data file and this file will be available under the youtube video description and you can simply click on the link and you can download the presentation and data file i'm going to analyze option and here i have descriptive statistics and i will find out cross tab option in cross tab i'm going to keep gender in rows and the next variable is smoking status so whether you are a smoker or not i'm going to keep this option in column i'm going to select statistics option and here i have to check the chi square and phi and kramer's v option in the next step i'm going to click on cells option and here i have to just simply select or check the row option and i'm going to select the adjusted standardized residual option this option is normally used when you want to perform post hoc test in chi square if you have a table where there is no 2 by 2 option like you have two variables and each one have two categories suppose if you have a 2 by 3 table like you have gender and the second one is in uh, voting intention for certain parties like pti pmln and people's party so you have two categories in one variable male and female and what are their voting intention for certain party PTI, PMLN, and People's Party. So, in this case, if you want to see the post hoc, want to perform post hoc analysis, you can use adjusted standardized option. I'm not going to select this option right now. You will find a new option of create APA style table in version 29. As I'm using version 29 of SPSS, this option is available for me. if you are using 27 or 28 version might be this option will be not available to you so i am going to click on the continue button here i am going to click on the okay button and i will see a output of chi square test for independence first of all i can see gender cross smoker cross tabulation here i can see that more males like 33 males tells us that they smoke and 151 reported that they do not smoke in case of females the count is 52 and 198 we can see the percentages like 17% males told us that they do not smoke they smoke and 82.1% the males told us that they do not smoke and uh, if you talk about uh, females then 20% females told us they smoke and 79.2% 79 females told us they do not smoke so as we can see from gender cross smoker cross tabulation less males and females told us that they smoke majority of them told us that they do not smoke we can see we have two hypotheses here there null hypothesis is there is no association between gender and smoking status and the alternative hypothesis is there is an association between gender and smoking status if we want to see whether our null hypothesis is accepted or alternative hypothesis accepted we will see chi square test table and in this table you will find certain values like pearson chi square value continuity correction value likelihood ratio value fisher exact test value i have already told you in the presentation that if you are using chi square there is an assumption of minimum expected count for 2 by 2 table that's 10% then like here we have 
zero cells have expected count less than five. The minimum expected count is 36.05, which is above the 10 number. So we are good to go. We can report continuity correction value because this is compensated value. And uh, previously it was recommended that we should report Pearson chi-square, but in two by two table, we normally report continuity correction because it's a compensated value than the Pearson chi-square value. That's Pearson chi-square value is a kind of exaggerated value. And we can see two-sided side, two significance value, which is 0.535. And this value is above 0 0.05 threshold so we can see say that there is no difference there is no association between gender and smoking status so our null hypothesis is accepted if we have violated this assumption of minimum expected count like here we have number of 5.04 rather than 36.04 then we will report fisher exact test value of uh, two-sided or you can report one-sided value if you have directional hypothesis and there is no value of chi-square for Fisher exact test you just have to simply report the two-sided value and you have to tell that there is no association between gender and smoking status this value Fisher of Fisher exact test will only be reported when you have violated the assumption of minimum expected count so what is symmetric Meyer table? This table tells us about the effect size. Here we have phi value and uh, this value is minus 0 0.036. And uh, we can tell that whether this is a significant effect size or not. So how we can explain this? This one, you just have to simply go to the last one option of the PowerPoint. If you are using the PowerPoint for the video and for explaining the your own table of uh, your research, the main value that you are interested in, in is from the output in Pearson chi-square value. And uh, here I've already told that you can report continuity correction. For effect size calculation, there are number of effect size statistics available in the cross tab procedure. For two by two table, the most commonly used one is phi coefficient, which is correlation coefficient and can range from zero to one and higher values indicating a stronger association between the two variables. In this example, the phi coefficient value is minus 0 0.034, which is considered a very small effect using cones 1988 criteria of 0 0.10 for small effect, 0 0.30 for medium and 0 0.50 for large effect. In our case, its value is 0 0.03, which is a small effect size. For larger table, like if you have table greater than 2 by 2 value, then you can report Kramer's V, which takes into account the degree of freedom. Slightly different criteria are recommended for judging the size of the effect for larger tables. And uh, we will explain that how we can use Kramer's V in the next videos. So. Here in our case, you can find out that it's 0 0.034 value, which is small effect size. So how we will write down this whole table explanation in APA style, we will write down like a chi-square test for independence with Yates continuity correction. And it shows that there is no significant association between gender and smoking status. This sign is for chi-square. And then we will mention two parentheses. We will report degree of freedom, which is one. And here you can see one degree of freedom. And n is equal to 436, which is an actual number of people that have number of values have, have been taken. And it is 436. We have asked 436 people about their gender and their smoking status. And then we will mention the equal sign and we will report the continuity correction value which is 0 0.337 and if we round off it will become 0 0.34 and then we will report the p value which is 0 0.6 and then phi value which is 0 0.0 minus 0 0.03 you can next mention that that our null hypothesis is accepted 
and the effect size is small. Normally, if we get the result, insignificant result, we do not normally report the effect size because there is no need to do it some, uh, as per some of the scholars. But you can report the effect size if you get the null hypothesis approved. So this is the whole chi-square test for independence. This PowerPoint will be available under the description. You can just simply click on the option of uh, and you will find out the PowerPoint and data file. If you are a media student or a communication student, and if you are following APA style, then this is the procedure to report the chi-square test for independence in APA style. You can mention one of your variable on this side and the second one of the variable on the column side. And you can mention the percentages and number of frequencies like this one, as I have already uh, reported here. I have taken this table from Denham 2024, uh, 2014 paper, Intermedia in Attribute Agenda Setting, the New York Times, the case of animal abuse in US horse racing, journalism and mass communication quarterly was the journal. And I have also provided some other example if you want to see that how different people have used chi-square test for independence in communication research. You can read Daily R 2006 paper, Billings 2002 paper, and Denham 2014 paper. These all paper will help you that how you can report or use chi-square in communication research or any other field of uh, social sciences that how you can use chi-square so that's all from whole idea from my side if you have any other question related to chi-square please do not forget to ask them in the description in the comment section i hope you have liked this video thank you for watching bye